what's good y'all super ross back at again with another video so i just finished watching the very first episode of the mr mcmahon documentary series on netflix um they dropped all six episodes so you can definitely go check it out if you haven't already you can binge watch it each episode is roughly an hour long and uh i definitely wanted to check it out as soon as it dropped it dropped at 2 a.m my time and uh, i stayed up to watch it and the very first episode i can say it really dives into what made vince who he is you know in the wrestling world they really dived into his relationship with his father which honestly i didn't know i didn't know how close or lack thereof the closeness to his father um so it was just one of those things where you kind of get that dynamic you you know you kind of get a a a view in how vince was in relation to his father and his family and his upbringing and what made him who he is today and this episode was a thoroughly enjoyable i i, I definitely enjoyed peeling back some of the the layers that um vince has created over the years and you kind of get somewhat of an understanding of what he was trying to do with the wrestling business as a whole i will say this i did take some notes probably not going to go all over extensively but just to kind of jog my memory because there was a lot of stuff that happened here um they get really i guess you can say right into the mix on what you kind of want to talk about or you know what people are really going to be checking out this documentary for and that's obviously the uh, the allegations and stuff like that that involve vince mcmahon um at the beginning of the documentary they say uh they, they put up a graphic saying that um this took place um like this initial um I guess interview or you know getting Vince to kind of talk about you know his life and him himself this kind of took place around 2021 they said there's over 100 hours uh of interviews were conducted and you have different various stars like Trish Stratus, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, you know Vince McMahon himself um stephanie mcmahon linda mcmahon uh shane mcmahon like a lot of people other people that are outside of the business but have been involved with vince at some point or another so they kind of let you know that you know this was filmed around that time and then they also uh at the beginning of the episode let it be known that i want to say they had to halt production essentially they had to stop recording uh, at least Vince's part because of the situation with the hush money if you guys remember Vince had to step down due to the hush money allegations and what was going on then he came back and then he obviously had to step down again with the whole Janelle Grant stuff and they bring all that up within the first four minutes of the documentary so it lets you know that they're not going to shy away from it, which also kind of leads into why Vince felt some type of way about the the, the documentary um, with his recent comments, feeling that, you know, it, it doesn't paint an accurate light on his situation. I think it's more so of they kind of, you know, addressing the biggest part of why people are going to check it out. Um, obviously, you know, what's going on with the scandal side of Vince McMahon, the the devious side of Vince McMahon, the allegations and stuff like that. But this episode didn't primarily focus on it. It mainly focused on his upbringing. Um, he talked about um, how he, you know, pretty much came from nothing. Uh, we've heard about this before, but for those who don't know, Vince grew up with his mother in a trailer park with his stepdad, who was very abusive. And you kind of you kind of empathize with him just a little bit because he's like, bro, I got my ass beat every day, but there was nothing I can do until I got out of the situation in in that situation. In that regard, you empathize with him because it's like that sucks for someone to be a little kid to be getting beat on by their stepfather is, is you know, that no kid should go through that. So I'm speaking from just a human standpoint. That is very unfortunate for Vince. Hell, 
um, before he even dived into that, he talked about how he he wanted to uh, he wanted to tell the Netflix uh, Netflix producers that were interviewing him and, and stuff like he wanted to kind of tell them some some stories, you know, some serious stories. But then he's like, nah, I'm probably not. I'll give you all a little bit, but I don't want you all to really know who I am. And that was very telling that he said that it's the way he said that. It's like, I don't really want you all to know who I really am. And I don't know. That's that's very interesting, you know, the way he worded that. But you can tell he wanted to kind of keep it, you know, the, his personal trauma, as most people would. He probably would wanted to keep it as close to the chest as possible, but he did feel comfortable letting people know, you know, that he was thoroughly abused. And then uh, after that, he ended up meeting his actual father, uh, Vince McMahon Sr., he didn't meet him until he was 12 years old. And when he met him, you know, he was expecting a big hug, but he didn't really get that. And then he understood, well, he didn't understand, but he kind of got, you know, why his father wasn't around because his father obviously uh, was one of the territory, uh, territory owners back in the day uh, when wrestling was split around the country in different territories. And he had the northeastern region, the New York area, Madison Square Garden area, all that side of the country, the WWF, World Wrestling Federation at the time. So if anything, you could see that Vince was like, all right, well, Vince Jr., I'm not going to probably get the affection that I want from my dad. So I'm going to pretty much, I'm going to have to take it, essentially. Not take his affection, but I'm going to have to, you know, get into business with my dad and and, and, and and get into this wrestling situation, this wrestling lifestyle and, and make the best of it because obviously he didn't want to go back to the trailer park, which is understandably so. And uh, he talked about how his, uh, his dad had put him on commentary right on the spot. One of the commentators at the show was like, hey, you know, pay me more or I, or I quit. So Vince Senior was like, all right, that's fine. Vince, you're on commentary. And it's crazy because th that was kind of the catalyst for how things started to get in motion. Vince being on commentary, you saw him as a as a uh, commentator, this this on air personality. They even show clips of him being on on the David uh, David Letterman show at one point, which I didn't even know. And his integral part of his voice and his his charisma and his character even though this is way before we got the tyrannical vince mcmahon character his character on screen uh being able to you know pull audiences in especially with him even calling matches and and then they even got into him taking over the different territories and how it caused friction with his dad because his dad initially wasn't for it but you know at one point, he was like, all right, well, you know, we'll see what you can do. Um, but he wasn't really for Vince's idea. Once Vince ended up buying WWF from him, which his dad didn't initially want to even sell it to him initially. Once he ended up buying WWF from him, he started, you know, going after the other territories, took over, you know, the other territories. Well, not took over, but essentially took the top talent, brought him over to WWF and was making a lot of money. But making a lot of enemies and once again vince's vince jr vision was completely different from senior vision of uh, vince senior's vision and they would always collide because vince he even said it in a documentary he does not like the word pro wrestling hence while we never really heard it while he was in charge because he didn't like that he liked sports entertainment that's what he wanted and you want gotta be honest this episode showed the ruthless business man, businessman, but how, how I guess you could say revolutionary he was and how forward thinking he was when it came to wrestling as a whole, because he was thinking cross country. That was his idea. How can we get this mainstream? And he was able to do it. He was able to get these top guys. He talked about ended up getting uh, how he ended up getting Hulk Hogan. And how that kind of changed everything. Uh, Vince Senior, and I didn't know this, Vince Senior um, didn't want Hulk Hogan to be a part of the, the Rocky Three movie. And 
basically told him, if you do it, I'm going to fire you. So Hulk Hogan did it still. And, you know, it, it's crazy how it came full circle because Vince uh, Jr. had seen him before and he, you know, he figured he was going to be somebody special. So now he teams up with Vince many years later and it's one of those things where it's like it's working in tandem because Vince is he's OK with his wrestlers being involved with, you know, entertainers and, and, and movies and and, you know, all these other stars and other genres of entertainment. That's what he wanted. He wanted as much eyes on the product. Hell, I didn't even know. Uh, WWE was doing like an MTV circuit, like they were being fe featured on early MTV. Like I didn't know that, you know. So this, a lot of this is just, you know, me finding out. Like, despite what we've heard in, uh, you know, in recent years, I think we can all agree Vince McMahon has always had a a business mind that was ahead of its time. Like he was talking about, you know, trying to get this nationally everywhere and then they also talked about you know the hardships of creating wrestlemania the very first one and how you know pretty much vince didn't even really have the money but he was putting up everything that you know that he had you know if with his family and stuff like that to make this the best possible event he wanted to make the super bowl for wrestling and of course with that comes obviously people that aren't too keen of it or don't want you to succeed um he even you know there's a situation where you know they're talking about a interviewer you know pretty much trying to shit on the business trying to expose the business and vince comes into the locker room and this definitely get this definitely sounds like something vince would do it's but in his younger days you know to be passive about it but he was like man i wish Someone would take care of that guy. He didn't actively say he wanted someone to hurt him, but he just wished that someone would have taken care of the, you know, the reporter that was basically trying to shit on the business. And the person that ended up taking care of uh, the reporter, y'all have seen the infamous clip from David Schultz um, where he, uh, you know, the reporter's like, hey, I think this is fake. He's in like, they show. Oh, you think this is fake? He slaps the dog shit out of him. Oh, you think this is fake, huh? And then he slaps him again. Obviously, a lawsuit comes with that as it <laughs> came with that. And then the whole Hulk Hogan choking out the the talk show host and legitimately choked him out, made him pass out, and he ended up uh, crack. You know, busting open the back of his head. There was more issues with that, and this was all right around the time of WrestleMania. So they were dealing with issues leading up to it and you know trying to overcome that to make this the best possible show but one of the sadder things that uh he uh talked about and like i said his relationship with his father was definitely strained um towards the end of his father's life i don't know if that's ironic or whatnot but and what i mean by ironic is his father finally told him that he was proud of him and Vince said that was one of the, the you know, biggest moments in my life to hear that, to hear that he was proud of me. And then he told uh, another situation the day before his father died, he told him that he loved him. And the reason why I say it's kind of tragic and kind of unfortunate is you could tell Vince wanted that approval from him. You can tell he did, you know. You, know, you can tell he wanted the approval from his father, his biological father. He got into the business. He bought the bought his company, and he's actually making waves with it, actually doing something that, you know, most people didn't think was even possible to do with wrestling. So to hear that finally, and it happens to be the right the day before he dies, you know, it's 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 fortunate that he heard it, but it's it's unfortunate that he didn't get that reinforcement growing up, you know, watching his dad and stuff like that. And I think psychologically that can mess you up. If you don't get that, that positive reinforcement from your parents, especially from your father that you're obviously looked up to and, and emulated your a life on, you got into the same business that he had, 
that he did, you know, yes, it's cool to hear that love, but it was just like, damn it, you know, it took so long for him to hear that. And he talked about like, you know, he just they were always butting heads over creative differences because he, you know, he didn't see Vince's vision. He he wasn't really rocking with what Vince was doing. So you all, you know, obviously knew that. And then he also talked about um, how they didn't really have many pleasantry conversations other than business. So to know that your father doesn't really say too much of the things that a son would need to hear and then when you finally hear it right before he dies it's it's a bittersweet moment it's cool that he said it but it's like it's right before he he passed on so it it gives you a perspective a little bit more on why vince is the way he is why he his mental is the way he is why he see certain things and view certain things differently you know you can kind of get an understanding not saying he's excused of any allegations you know potentially that he's done but more or less it gives you an inside look of yeah he had a tough upbringing and you know the you know trying to get the approval of your father who barely gives it until right before he dies on the business that you know You've take took it, you know, pretty much, you know, took it over. You, you know, took over essentially from him. And you would think you would get, oh man, I'm really proud of you. Hey man, I may not agree with, but you doing you really doing big things and kind of switching it up in the sense where you don't really get that can can be uh mentally it can it can mentally mess you up. Or what it seems as if what Vince did was, you know, he didn't really too much dwell on it. He just kept on going about making uh wwf at the time the best uh wrestling entertainment company it could be and he just stayed focused on that and i'm guessing that's pretty much what happened so overall first episode look into his his you know his upbringing and his ruthlessness as a business and it was very informative and i enjoyed it i, I definitely enjoyed it but i think the next episode is supposed to dive into after the success of the first WrestleMania, then you have to do, you know, the the um, the other controversies he started to get into with the whole steroid situation and other issues, other lawsuits were coming up. So, you know, you know, we we're going to start to get into how he dealt with those at that time and, you know, continue on from there. So, hey, I'm going to be checking uh, pretty much this uh, documentary every single episode you know every day possibly um not even possibly i am because you know I'm, I'm actually interested um so i most likely will film well yeah i most likely will check out episode two later on today and and drop a video and each episode i check out i drop a video right afterwards that way my memory is fresh um and we can have a discussion on just some of the things that happened so hey if you've seen the first episode comment down below let me know what was your thoughts on it did you enjoy it um did it change a little bit of your perspective of vince as a whole just knowing a little bit of his upbringing and you know the things that he had to do to get wwe where it is now let me know how y'all felt about the first episode but i appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace